hello friends welcome to this video so today we'll be having some introduction for 5g like what all things are important in 5g how 5g came 5g evolution and the magic triangle of 5g so let's start this video so if you see this evolution like uh, we have 1g 2g 3g 4g 5g so this is our fifth generation so if you see uh, there is one thing which is common like every 10 years we have one new technology okay so uh, maybe in around 1980 1g was there then in uh, 2g 1991 uh, 1998 or maybe 2000 you can say 3g was there then 4g the first commercial deployment maybe around 2010 and now uh, 2020 21 you are seeing 5g so in every 10 years you can say one new technology will come so this 5G is just the beginning uh, uh, like you will see a lot of deployments and a lot of work in 5G which is coming in India. So this 5G course if you focus well so this will give you a lot of opportunities and also like for 10 years you can uh, you can make this 5G technology your bread and butter and you can uh, whatever you can do you can learn this so this will help you a lot so this this course will give you the platform the foundation which you can build to develop 5g technology okay so focus on whatever uh, things i'll cover and and then just go through it uh, by your own as well okay so this is the evolution like uh, we currently we are in 2021 so 5g you see like uh, all the devices are uh, will able to talk to each other the speed is maybe around 20 gbps or the spectrum is also 30 gigahertz up to you can use so this is uh, like 5g which uh, which is serving so many things for us so if you see 4g like uh, it is uh, like so many things uh, 4g is also if you see in india like uh, currently 4g we have we don't have uh, 5g like uh, you you have seen maybe like 5g phones are launching but uh, uh, currently we don't have that uh, the network capability the airtel geo or uh, like vodafone and these uh, companies are working to create 5g network 5g inf infrastructure so that is under uh, testing process like the uh, integration is happening maybe some specific areas they, their trials are ongoing for 5g so if you see like uh, in 5g like most of uh, what they are saying like so many things are sold in 5g and uh, we are able to uh, like enjoy life like anything so this is the just the evolution of 5g so we started with 1g and uh, 2 to the 5g so this is how our evolution happens so this is the magic triangle of uh, 5g like if you see we have three things uh, mainly like embb urllc and mmtc so first one is extreme mobile broadband here our focus is like for this section is to increase the speed like anything where here you will get 20 gbps in downlink and 10 gbps in uplink so this is speed is like uh, very fast so you can download like in uh, 20 gb per second so that is like uh, too much speed so this this section uh, talks about the mobile broadband like extreme level so th that is one part of the triangle uh, second is like mmtc like massive machine type communication like so many devices are integrating to each other like iot devices nbiot cat m so many uh, different kind of uh, uh, testing and development already ongoing so this is like uh, connections like anything per square kilometer so much of connection like uh, so many small devices are there in your like maybe in your uh, bag or in your like different uh, electronic gadgets and the automobile industry like connected cars and all so many things are happening in this area so this this is like uh, related to machine type communication like different machines are talking to each other and sending the data uh, so that is one part and third part is ultra reliable low latency communication this is like the latency is the speed like how much fast you can do okay so they target 30 millisecond for latency so this is ultra reliable low latency communication so this is the uh, these are the three uh, three main components of 5g magic triangle which uh, 3gpp and so many standard bodies they are working and uh, currently like we are seeing like this is happening uh, in front of us so this is the 5g magic triangle 
so now 5g like 5g means nr like if you have heard like so many uh, so many words like new radio nr uh, you have seen on the internet or somewhere like nr nr people are saying so nr is nothing but a new radio and uh, 5g like if somebody is saying nr that means he is talking about 5g okay so this 5g introduced in release 15 okay 3g pp release 15 so uh, this is uh, released in like uh, phase manner like First is uh, 5G release phase 1, uh, we call it release 15 and 5G phase 2, we call it release 16, okay. So 5G introduced in 15 but phase wise uh, release 15 and 16 and 17, 18, this way like uh, the 5G starts from release 15, that you have to understand, okay. So new radio and release 15, this is the main thing for this slide. And uh, now in 5G, like we have, uh, they have divided the frequency range, like they have divided FR1 and FR2, okay. So two two ranges are there, like uh, what uh, they have divided. So here, like 450 millihertz to 6000 millihertz or 24250 millihertz to 5200 millihertz. So FR1, you can say sub 6 gigahertz, like you, you have heard this term maybe sub 6 gigahertz we we call it fr1 and whereas fr2 is up to from 24 gigahertz to 53 gigahertz we are like so much messy mimo the uh, so much, uh, the this frequency is like in the range of 24 to 53 gigahertz so that that's how they have divided this uh, 5g frequency band, bands fr1 and fr2 okay so this is the release wise like if you see like uh, uh, we started LT with release 8, then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and uh, release 15, 5G phase 1, release 16, 5G phase 2, then uh, release 17 also uh, work is ongoing, release 18. So that is how like release wise evolution happens. Okay. So currently like uh, release 15 starts from here. So different kind of uh, additions with respect to previous uh, features we have like, like there are some enhancements in cat m2 or short tti lt v2x v2x is also there in earlier phases as well release 13 and 14 as well but some improvements are there so uav support like your drones and all we call it uav and this 5g phase 1 msa and sa 5g nr embb so mainly this phase 1 is focusing on embb whatever we discussed in magic triangle so uh, that embb is there so nr support for satellite you can uh, connect with satellite and uh, there there is one system information uh, sib also which gives the information about satellite and all so nr in l license so these are the release 15 then release 16 is talk uh, we'll talk about the voice nr voice or uh, nr2 I, uh, iiot nr v2x nr broad, uh, broadcast positioning uh, power consumption ur llc so here this ur the the second keyword of Magic Triangle, UR, LLC is also there, Mobility, MIMO, NR and LT, NR Satellite and other LT enhancements. So this is how like if you see we are evolving uh, the features as well with respect to uh, release, releases, whatever 3GPP is releasing. So here this is, these are our LT, okay, release 10 we have LT Advance, okay, so here like uh, carrier aggregation supports came. So this is how like we are evolving in release wise as well. So, I hope you understand this uh, release wise features. Okay, so uh, new new features are adding in every releases. Now, see the the main focus for this slide is there are uh, five main main chipset companies which we have. You have to target these five companies. Okay, so if you if you know like what all chipsets they are releasing, what kind of work they are uh, doing and features, and also you have to focus on these five companies in in your like you should be updated with these five companies all the time whether it is linkedin or whether it is any any other social media platform you you should follow these companies because that will give you the update like what what all new chipsets are coming with what features what is the difference from lte how new features they are adding so that you need to focus so mediatek qualcomm samsung unisoc and high silicon so high silicon is uh, this is a product of Huawei only. So this is a Chinese company. So uh, these all uh, these five companies you have to focus on. Okay. So 
now we'll see the chipset 5g chipset what what these companies has released okay so this mediatek uh, they they have released uh, this uh, 5g millimeter wave and uh, sub 6 gigahertz this 5g soc okay so they have m80 also m70 also this is the 5g uh, chipset range of mediatek so you should be aware like what all 5g and r mm wave dual connectivity carrier aggregation carrier aggregation with mixed duplex like tdd and fdd supporting dynamic spectrum sharing ready so peak rate they are giving like 7.67 gbps and 3.76 in uplink and downlink so uh, it supports sa and nsa like stand alone mode like complete 5g there is no dependency on lte and non stand alone mode where we have dependency on legacy technology like 5g has to fall back uh, fall back to lte so this is how like uh, this mediatek uh, 5g chipset uh, features they have so like 5g mm wave 2 fr2 so fr2 up to eight component carrier so Full 2G to 5G supported. So in this, you have 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. All five, te- all all four technologies supported in this chipset. Release 16 standard. So that means it support uh, prior releases uh, up to release 16. It is compliant. They released 15 or released 14. They are supporting. So true dual 5G, dual 5G SIM. They are supporting dual. Uh, bo nr voice over nr so this is how like uh, you should know like what all new chipset uh, is coming with these uh, these vendors these chipset vendors okay this is mediatek first one second one is qualcomm like qualcomm is working heavily on this 5g and all and they they are the market leaders and they uh, they their chipset is uh, like one of the co- costliest in all these uh, other companies so so the uh, qualcomm is the market leader so it has like triple eight 5g mobile platform they have like snapdragon x62 5g modem rf system okay so they they have 875g mobile platform so they have different uh, uh, range of chipset like 2g 3g 4g 5g iot nbirt so they have ample of ranges and they they are working very closely so you should follow qualcomm like uh, you, you have to visit the qualcomm uh, website it's very helpful so many things you can learn from that so i'm just giving you the overview like which section which companies you have to follow so that you will get better job opportunities well if you if you do this this will help you a lot in your future okay so just update yourself with 5g like anything so then third one is unisoc 5g chipset this is like earlier there is a company called sprd spectrum maybe if you have heard it uh, and there is uh, one more company rda so they merged together and they now call it unisoc so they have one chip like unisoc t770 world first uh, 6 nanometer euv 5g chip they are saying so it support nsa sa gsm wcdm lt so cat 15 release 15 gps glonus baidu galileo all these satellites they are supporting so bt bluetooth 5.0 they support so this is the chipset of unisoc so they are not market leaders they are the actually they they make phones uh, chipset for low, low cost uh, devices like uh, maybe you have heard lava or micromax uh, so the these companies are using uh, that's how they are releasing the phone a very uh, low price because the chipset quality is also low okay so that's why they use unisoc uh, th- this is a chinese company so they have uh, like the cost is very less as compared to qualcomm uh, chipset and this is one more uh, like huawei high silicon 5g chipset so this is kiran kiran is the product of huawei maybe so many people heard about it kiran 995g is the like chipset of uh, 5g so it's a uh, like uh, 7 nanometer eu process or like 2g 3g 4g 5g sa and nsa fused network architecture fdd and tdd spectrum access so it supports all these things same see like every company like maybe if you if you have seen the mobile phone samsung apple oppo vivo they have like similar kind of configurations same way the chipset also like uh, either uh, whether it is from huawei or like samsung or qualcomm or mediatek then uh, the the technology is same right in every chipset it depends like the how they develop it so that and uh, how capable their developers are so that is the only difference okay so this is the high silicon 5g chipset from huawei 
and the, uh, samsung also has a series of 5g chipset like they 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 have zynos if you have heard it uh, in india they launch uh, their uh, phones with zynos chipset in us they launch with qualcomm so this is how they develop uh, like so 2100 zynos is 5g chip so 5 nanometer this 5g nr it supports and 5g nr millimeter wave uh, lte cat 24 so this samsung galaxy s21 ultra samsung galaxy s21 plus samsung galaxy s21 these all supports 5g chipset so uh, samsung is also uh, like uh, they also work a lot in this chipset uh, they uh, they are growing like anything so this is also one one more company so you have to focus on these four five companies with whatever new updates they are coming whatever new releases they are coming up just to give you like uh, in the introduction part like if you do this course what all uh, different prospects will open for you that i am just uh, covering in this uh, 5g introduction section so i think uh, this is for today's uh, lecture so uh, i hope you like this video so meet you in the next video thank thank you hello friends welcome to this video so today we'll be having some introduction for 5g like what all things are important in 5g how 5g came 5g evolution and the magic triangle of 5g so let's start this video so if you see this evolution like uh, we have 1g 2g 3g 4g 5g so this is our fifth generation so if you see uh, there is one thing which is common like every 10 years we have one new technology okay so uh, maybe in around 1980 1g was there then in uh, 2g 1991 Uh, 1998 or maybe 2000 you can say 3g was there then 4g the first commercial deployment maybe around 2010 and now uh, 2020 21 you are seeing 5g so in every 10 years you can say one new technology will come so this 5g is just the beginning uh, uh, like you will see lot of deployments and lot of work in 5g which is coming in india so this 5g codes if you focus well so this will give you lot of opportunities and also like for 10 years you can uh, you can make this 5g technology your bread and butter and you can uh, whatever you can do you can learn this so this will help you a lot so this this course will give you the platform the foundation which you can build to develop 5g technology okay so focus on whatever uh, things i'll cover and and then just go through it uh, by your own as well okay so this is the evolution like uh, we currently we are in 2021 so 5g you see like uh, all the devices are uh, will able to talk to each other the speed is maybe around 20 gbps or the spectrum is also 30 gigahertz up to you can use so this is uh, like 5g which uh, which is serving so many things for us so if you see 4g like uh, it is uh, like so many things uh, 4g is also if you see in india like uh, currently 4g we have we don't have uh, 5g like uh, you you have seen maybe like 5g phones are launching but uh, uh, currently we don't have that uh, the network capability the airtel jio or uh, like vodafone and these uh, companies are working to create 5g network 5g inf infrastructure so that is under uh, testing process like the Uh, integration is happening maybe some specific areas they their trials are ongoing for 5g so if you see like uh, in 5g like most of uh, what they are saying like so many things are solved in 5g and uh, we are able to uh, like enjoy life like anything so this is the just the evolution of 5g so we started with 1g and uh, to do the 5g so this is how our evolution happens so this is the magic triangle of 5g like if you see we have three things uh, mainly like embb ur llc and mmtc so first one is extreme mobile broadband here our focus is like for this section is to increase the speed like anything we here you will get 20 gbps in downlink and 10 gbps in uplink so this is speed is like uh, very fast so you can download like in uh, 20 gb per second so 
that is like uh, too much speed so this this section uh, talks about the mobile broadband like extreme level so th that is one part of the triangle uh, second is like mmtc like massive machine type communication like so many devices are integrating to each other like iot devices nbiot cat m so many uh, different kind of uh, uh, testing and development already ongoing so this is like uh, connections like anything per square kilometer so much of connection like uh, so many small devices are there in your like maybe in your uh, bag or in your like different uh, electronic gadgets and the automobile industry like connected cars and all so many things are happening in this area so this this is like related to machine type communication like different machines are talking to each other and sending the data uh, so that is one part and third part is ultra reliable low latency communication this is like the latency is the speed like how much fast you can do okay so their target is 30 millisecond for latency so this is ultra reliable low latency communication so this is the uh, these are the three uh, three main components of 5g magic triangle which uh, 3gpp and so many standard bodies they are working and uh, currently like we are seeing like this is happening in front of us so this is the 5, 5g magic triangle so now 5g like 5g means nr like if you have heard like so many uh, so many words like new radio nr uh, you have seen on the internet or somewhere like nr nr people are saying so nr is nothing but a new radio and uh, 5g like if somebody is saying nr that means he is talking about 5g okay so this 5g introduced in release 15 okay 3g paper release 15 so uh, this is uh, released in like uh, phase manner like First is uh, 5G release phase 1, uh, we call it release 15 and 5G phase 2, we call it release 16, okay. So 5G introduced in 15 but phase wise uh, release 15 and 16 and 17, 18, this way like uh, the 5G starts from release 15, that you have to understand, okay. So new radio and release 15, this is the main thing for this slide. And uh, now in 5G, like we have, uh, they have divided the frequency range, like they have divided FR1 and FR2, okay. So two two ranges are there, like uh, what uh, they have divided. So here, like 450 millihertz to 6000 millihertz or 24250 millihertz to 5200 millihertz. So FR1, you can say sub 6 gigahertz, like you, you have heard this term maybe sub 6 gigahertz we we call it fr1 and whereas fr2 is up to from 24 gigahertz to 53 gigahertz we are like so much messy mimo the uh, so much, uh, the this frequency is like in the range of 24 to 53 gigahertz so that that's how they have divided this uh, 5g frequency band, bands fr1 and fr2 okay so this is the release wise like if you see like uh, uh, we started LT with release 8, then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and uh, release 15, 5G phase 1, release 16, 5G phase 2, then uh, release 17 also uh, work is ongoing, release 18. So that is how like release wise evolution happens. Okay. So currently like uh, release 15 starts from here. So different kind of uh, additions with respect to previous uh, features we have like, like there are some enhancements in cat m2 or short tti lt v2x v2x is also there in earlier phases as well release 13 and 14 as well but some improvements are there so uav support like your drones and all we call it uav and this 5g phase 1 msa and sa 5g nr embb so mainly this phase 1 is focusing on embb whatever we discussed in magic triangle so uh, that embb is there so nr support for satellite you can uh, connect with satellite and uh, there there is one system information uh, sib also which gives the information about satellite and all so nr in l license so these are the release within then release 16 is talk uh, we'll talk about the voice nr voice or uh, nr2 i uh, iot nr v2x nr broad, uh, broadcast positioning uh, power consumption ur llc so here this you are the the second keyword of Magic triangle U R L L C is also there. Mobility, MIMO, N R and L T N R satellite, and other L T enhancements. So this is how, like, if you see, we are evolving uh, the features as well with respect to uh, release releases. Whatever 3 G P P is releasing, 
so here this is these over are LT okay release 10 we have LT advance okay so here like uh, carrier aggregation supports came so this is how like we are evolving in release wise as well so I hope you understand this uh, release wise features okay so uh, new new features are adding in every releases now see the the main focus for this slide is there are uh, five main main chipset companies which we have you have to target these five companies okay so if you if you know like what all chipsets they are releasing what kind of work they are uh, doing and features and also you have to focus on these five companies in in your like you should be updated with these five companies all the time whether it is linkedin or whether it is any any other social media platform you you should follow these companies because that will give you the update like what what all new chipsets are coming with what features what is the difference from lt how new features they are adding so that you need to focus so mediatek qualcomm samsung unisoc and high silicon so high silicon is uh, this is a product of Huawei only. So this is a Chinese company. So uh, these all uh, these five companies you have to focus on. Okay. So now we'll see the chipset five chipset what what these companies has released. Okay. So this MediaTek uh, they they have released uh, this uh, 5G millimeter wave and uh, sub six gigahertz this 5G SOC. Okay. So they have M80 also M70 also. This is the 5G uh, chipset range of MediaTek. So you should be aware like what all 5G and RMM wave dual connectivity carrier aggregation carrier aggregation with mixed duplex like TDD and FDD supporting dynamic spectrum sharing ready. So peak rate they are giving like 7.67 Gbps and 3.76 in uplink and downlink. So uh, it supports SA and NSA like standalone mode like complete 5G. There is no dependency on LT and non standalone mode where we have dependency on legacy technology like 5g has to fall back uh, fall back to lt so this is how like uh, this mediatek uh, 5g chipset uh, features they have so like 5g mm wave 2 fr2 so fr2 up to eight component carrier so full 2g to 5g support so in this you have 2g 3g 4g 5g all five all, all four technology supported in this chipset release 16 is standard so that means it support uh, prior releases uh, up to release 16 it is compliant uh, released 15 or release 14 they are supporting so true dual 5g dual 5g sim they are supporting dual uh, bo nr voice over nr so this is how like uh, you should know like what all new chipset uh, is coming with these uh, these vendors these chipset vendors okay this is mediatek first one second one is qualcomm like Qualcomm is working heavily on this 5G and all and they, they are the market leaders and they uh, they their chipset is uh, like one of the co costliest in all these uh, other companies so so the uh, Qualcomm is the market leader so it has like triple eight 5G mobile platform they have like Snapdragon X62 5G modem RF system okay so they they have 875 5G mobile platform so they have different uh, uh, range of chipset like 2g 3g 4g 5g iot nbirt so they have ample of ranges and they they are working very closely so you should follow qualcomm like uh, you, you have to visit the qualcomm uh, website it's very helpful so many things you can learn from that so i'm just giving you the overview like which section which companies you have to follow so that you will get better job opportunities well if you if you do this this will help you a lot in your future okay so just update yourself with 5g like anything so then third one is unisoc 5g chipset this is like earlier there is a company called sprd spectrum maybe if you have heard it uh, and there is uh, one more company rda so they merged together and they now call it unisoc so they have one chip like unisoc t770 world first uh, six nanometer euv 5g chip they are saying so it support NSA, SA, GSM, WCDMA, LT, so CAT 15, release 15, GPS, GLONASS, Baidu, Galileo, all these satellites they are supporting. So BT, Bluetooth 5.0 they support. So this is the chipset of Unisoc. So they are not market leaders. They are the, actually they, they make phones, uh, chipset for low, low cost uh, devices like uh, maybe you have heard Lava or Micromax. So they, these companies are using uh, 
that's how they are releasing the phone in a very uh, low price because the chipset quality is also low okay so that's why they use unisoc uh, this is a chinese company so they have uh, like the cost is very less as compared to qualcomm uh, chipset and this is one more uh, like huawei high silicon 5g chipset so this is kiran kiran is the product of huawei maybe so many people heard about it kiran 995g is the like chipset of uh, 5g so it's a uh, like uh, 7 nanometer EU process or like 2g 3g 4g 5g sa and nsa fusion network architecture fdd and gdd spectrum access so it supports all these things same see like every company like Maybe if you if you have seen the mobile phone Samsung, Apple, Oppo, Vivo, they have like similar kind of configurations. Same way the chipset also like either, whether it is from Huawei or like Samsung or Qualcomm or MediaTek, then the the technology is same right in every chipset. It depends like the how they develop it so that and uh, how capable their developers are. So that is the only difference. Okay, so. Th this is the high silicon 5G chipset from Huawei. And uh, Samsung also has a series of 5G chipset like they, they, they have Xynos if you have heard it. Uh, in India they launch uh, their uh, phones with Xynos chipset. In US they launch with Qualcomm. So this is how they develop uh, like so 2100 Xynos is 5G chip. So 5 nanometer this 5G NR it supports and 5G NR millimeter wave uh, LTE CAD 24. So this Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus, Samsung Galaxy S21, these all supports 5G chipset. So uh, Samsung is also uh, like uh, they also work a lot in this chipset. Uh, they uh, they are growing like anything. So this is also one, one more company. So you have to focus on these four or five companies with whatever new updates they are coming, whatever new releases they are coming up. Just to give you like uh, in the introduction part like if you do this course, what all uh, different prospects will open for you that I am just uh, covering in this uh, 5G introduction section. So I think uh, this is for today's uh, lecture. So uh, I hope you like this video. So meet you in the next video. Thank, thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this video. So today we'll be discussing about 5G standardization like what all bodies we have who are developing these uh, technologies. So we'll be discussing about that. So let's start the video. So in this uh, in this picture, uh, you can see like this is one example of 3GPP meetings which are happening on regular basis like they have whole schedule for the year and then they work upon the technology and they submit their uh, uh, features or request uh, to the 3GPP delegates and also they are working closely to develop this 5G technology. Okay, so uh, I just want to show you like uh, these people are related to big big companies like Samsung, Apple, Huawei or for any uh, like different different like chipset uh, people also there like Qualcomm, MediaTek or operators are also there across the world. It is not like only from particular country uh, they are working. This is global uh, globally uh, uh, global organization this 3GPP. So a lot of uh, collaboration uh, is there so that uh, they can develop the new technology. So this is I just want to show you uh, that meeting picture. So this for this standardization like we have so many uh, uh, governing bodies which are uh, helping us to develop these standards. So first one is ITUR this is International Telecommunication Union Radio Communication. So this has one vision of IMT 2020 so where they have uh, for 5G they have range of features uh, they have targeted like ultra low latency, high reliability, advanced antenna technique, millimeter wave, massive IoT, spectrum flexibility. So this is one uh, target which they have taken to develop uh, new technology. After that we have uh, different different uh, bodies like SDOs, we have different standard development organization, we have 3GPP which is uh, the, the core of developing this 5G and we have HC, IEEE, etc. So many other organizations are also there. So these, uh, these further uh, uh, organizations are working on the scenarios like we have in 5G, we have three uh, main branches like EMBB, UR, LLC, MMTC. So these are the three user scenario which, which are developed and uh, 
all these organization are focusing on to develop these uh, uh, scenarios so inside this we have 5g nr like new radio inside that we have nsa and sa mode non standalone and standalone mode so we have two modes in 5g and uh, that uh, that comes under embb and ur llc so these nsa and sa comes under this then further like uh, massive machine type communication and some part of ur llc uh, we have 5g uh, and lte as well uh, so uh, that way they are targeting so this is one uh, overview like how like uh, itu set the uh, like the targets and then they achieved then different uh, organization work uh, together and then we have this uh, magic triangle uh, scenarios like embb urlc and mmtc so this is the overview of how like uh, the the new technology reality comes into picture so this 3gpp uh, and their organization partner so 3gpp is a combination of so many organization like uh, uh, in this diagram we have seven uh, development organization which are working together to develop 3gpp so this ats ccsa europe tsdsi korea uh, tts from korea ttc japan arib is also japan so from japan we have two uh, organization arib and ttc from india also we have tsdsi which is a part of 3gpp and hc we have europe uh, for europe region ccsa is from china and ats is from usa so this is how like these different uh, development organization working together with and they produce the reports and specification that define any 3gpp technology so uh, the uh, they are the one who are working on this uh, so that we can uh, take benefit from them like all the society and every country can take benefit from that so they are working on these technologies so they have some market representation partners also which follow 3gpp and their concept their whatever vision they have they are also uh, uh, like uh, helping them to to encourage more people to to become the uh, partner of 3gpp like different different organization are there like 5g aa 5g america coai this is from india uh, cellular operator association of india ctia ngmn gcf this is uh, one kind of certification for mobile devices i'll cover this gcf in detail in in further slides so this tcca so we, they have different market representation partners so which take part with uh, uh, 3gpp vision and goals so 3gpp is one thing there is one more thing 3gpp2 also maybe many of you have heard about 3gpp2 as well so earlier we have like cdma technology as well that comes under uh, 3gpp2 and all this umt sdsm lt 5g comes un under 3gpp so in 3gpp2 also they have different uh, uh, like different company uh, different organization like one ja from japan from china south korea japan and north america so different uh, same like here in 3gpp have different organization from these uh, these different countries here also we have uh, the collaboration of different countries to develop this 3gpp2 so maybe you have heard about cdma and this cdma technologies uh, cdma 2000 and all so cdma 200 as well so this is how like uh, 3gpp and 3gpp2 are uh, both are separate uh, uh, standards so uh, so you, you should know the difference between these two then for uh, developing any uh, 3gpp technologies they have like projects uh, project coordination group pcg and in that they have three branches like one is tsd technical specification group for ram radio access network tsd for ct core network and terminals and tsd sa for service and system aspects so these uh, three branches they have divided to to work specifically on this particular area like this ran side they only work on ran part like ran uh, wg1 the work group one they have divided the different work work group inside this tsd so radio layer one spec so these ran wg1 works on only uh, layer one then work group two works on layer two and layer three this is how they have divided the different groups which focuses on the uh, particular layer or particular section so it is not like everybody is working on every part of technology whatever is is developing 
so then we have core network also like different core network uh, parts like work group 1 end to end aspect work group 3 interworking with external network work group 4 protocol within the core network smart card application work group 6 same way we have tsg sa as well service and system aspect there also we have different uh, work groups like services architecture security speech audio video multimedia codex uh, telecom management different uh, so suppose you are Uh, you want some information about uh, layer three, so you should focus on here, like protocol stack of layer three. So your target should uh, should be to understand this part, radio access network part, and RAN WG two, uh, work group two. You have to focus on. So that way you can uh, you can uh, divide like from where exactly you have to focus to learn the technology. So 3GPP, they have like so many other uh, part uh, organizations also which are uh, uh, connecting with 3GPP as well. Like IETF is there, OMA, and they have different uh, market partners. Here we have these seven organization partners. Just GCF also Global Certification Forum. They are uh, closely following the 3GPP specs for terminal certification. Terminal certification means device certification. then this cross reference of specs with wifi alliance wimbanks forum so this also uh, 3gpp is also dealing with that as well and here we have this itu rnt so this is how 3gpp ecosystem looks like and all the different uh, standards are talking to 3gpp so 3gpp is very important to understand any new technology uh, whatever is coming in the market so this is about itu like we have international telecommunication union that has different branches like one is itu t one is itu d and one is itu r this is mainly for radio communication standardization and global spectrum management so this I, itu r uh, mainly related to us so we have to focus on this only so this is for telecommunication and this is for ass assisting implementation and operation of telecommunication in developing organization uh, countries so this is how uh, itu structure looks like So in this video we have discussed about different standardization uh, bodies which we have for developing 5G. So I hope uh, you have learned from this video. So thanks for watching this video. Hello friends, welcome to this video. So today we will discuss in 5G we have two modes NSA and SA. So let's discuss these modes. So in NSA mode we call it non standalone mode. so in this mode we are uh, dependent on 4g network like whatever signaling and data we are transferring we are using 4g network so as you can see in this figure like this is our mobile device we have lte network and we have nr 5g network as well but all the signaling will be happening with the help of this 4g network you see here like this dotted lines means control plane and Uh, this dark line means data plane so if you see here like with the help of lt the core network is providing all the signaling and the data uh, connectivity both but 5g nr is also used for data uh, data services like if you want to uh, send data you can use nr as well for 5g so as you can see like this uh, nsa mode is leveraging the existing 4g deployments like already 4g deployment is there but uh, you have uh, 5g cell as well but most of the things you are doing with the help of uh, 4g network so that is nsa mode non standalone mode like we are dependent on 4g network completely uh, we are not dependent on 5g okay so here no overloading of epc with 5g signaling so this 5g uh, signaling is not there in this nsa mode everything is done by the uh, 4g itself so this is non standalone mode now if you see this 5g sa mode here the mobile phone is completely uh, like either it can use 4g or like 5g so there is no dependency on 5g signaling or 4g signaling here if you see like with the help of nr and 5g code network you can use the 5g services in the device and also if like lte and epc is also supported then this can also be done so we call it uh, 5g stand alone mode where full fledged complete 5g independently there is no dependency on 4g network okay 
So SA scheme is that the 5G base station is directly connected to the 5G core network and the control signaling does not depend on the 4G network at all. So this is just an overview of uh, SA and NSA mode like how in NSA mode we are dependent on 4G network but in SA mode we are not dependent on uh, 4G. 5G is fully capable of supporting the control plane and data plane as well. So in this video we have just seen the difference between like SA and NSA mode. So thanks for watching this video. Hello friends. So today we'll be discussing about 5G architecture. So in this diagram as you see like suppose we have one mobile phone UE. We call it UE. And we have access network where our G node B's and NG node B's are there. So we call it like 5G RAN. Radio access network or NR also you can say. Then we have the core network, we call it 5GC or uh, we call it 5G core network as well. And then we have the data network where all the application servers are there, we call it internet. So like most of the UE protocol testing happens only at the UE side where we have the protocol stack and we have different layers in that stack and we test those layers with the help of uh, 3GPP specifications for conformance testing or protocol testing. Okay, so, so these are some important abbreviations uh, which we use in this uh, video like 5G series, 5G core network, AMF is access in mobility management function, UPS, UPF is user plane function, NGRAN is next generation radio access network, G node B next generation node B, NGE node B next generation E node B. So these are some uh, abbreviations which we, we will be using. Okay. So suppose we have an NGRAN node. NGRAN means like you can say it can be G node B or also NGE node B like if it is connected to LT as well. So a G node B is providing NR user plane and control plane protocol termination towards the UE. Like with the help of G node B. You can connect to UE and you have two planes like user plane and control plane. User plane is for sending the data and control plane is for signaling. Mainly for signaling like RRC and NAS layer we use in the protocol stack. And we have NGE node B providing EUTRA user plane and control plane protocol terminates towards the UE. Like with the help of this uh, you can connect to user plane and control plane with the UE if you have NGE node B. This is for LTE services. So the G, no, uh, G node B's and NGE node B's are interconnected with each other by the means of XN interface. We'll see in, in the next slide. Okay, so this is the overall architecture of 5G. So this is not in detail. This is just to give you the glimpse of 5G architecture. So here we have NGRAN, next generation RAN and we have the core network 5GC. So here uh, if you see like we have uh, suppose we have G node B's so two G node B's are interconnected with the help of XN interface and we have uh, two NG node B's so that is also connected to XN interface. So here for connection of G node B's or NG node B's we use XN interface and then for further connected to e AMF and UPF we have NG interface and all these uh, suppose uh, this AMF is connected to so many G node B's and NG node B's. So all are connected using NG interface. So this is the overall architecture of how the G node B's, E node B's and AMF, UP, UPF are connected with the help of XN and NG interface. Okay. So this is the just in comparison with LT uh, overall architecture live. If you see the, uh, the difference like here we have like X2 interface. And here we have XN interface. The interfaces name are different. Okay. Then for further connected to MME and S gateway, we had uh, S1 protocol in uh, LT, and here we have NG protocol. Okay. For connected to AMF and UPF. So MME is uh, named as AMF in 5G, and S gateway you call it UPF in 5G. So this is how like uh, both the architecture are uh, like you can say similar. Uh, and the namings uh, are changed but uh, however the the look and feel is similar to uh, LT network only okay but if if we go inside detail about like two types of further they have divided like se service based architecture and reference based architecture we'll see in the further videos 
how uh, different uh, network elements new uh, network elements also introduced and we'll see the features as well okay so this is the overall uh, difference between 5g and 4g architecture so this is the end to end uh, diagram of 5g architecture here we have suppose so many uis then we have 5g ran so we have g node b then we have this core network so many network elements are there like udm pcf amf smf ausf upf and here we have the data network so udm is unified data management pcf is policy control function ausf is authentication server function smf is session management control function upf is user plane function amf is access and mobility management function for for uh, for this video you just uh, understand like these are the network elements how they are interconnected then in further videos we'll see each network element and the the role and the features what they do why they use so we'll discuss separately okay it, this is just a glimpse of end to end architecture how different uh, elements are interconnected so g node b is connected to amf also to upf as well so this is for signaling and then this is for data then uh, there is one interface also like where u is directly connected to the amf access and mobility management function we we'll call it n1 interface okay so this is how like uh, 5g end to end architecture looks like so this is the comparison of overall architecture this is not the detail one so how uh, 4g and 5g what all uh, things are uh, like uh, different in this 5g then the names uh, and the interfaces are changed okay so today we we in this video we have discussed about 5, 5g architecture like uh, we have ran we have core network and we have internet so how these three are interconnected then uh, difference between this uh, 4G and 5G and then this end to end architecture. So I hope you like this video. So thanks for watching. Hello friends. So in this video we will be discussing about 5G interfaces. So let's start it. So in this diagram like two interfaces which are very important and you should know the functionality of these interfaces. These two interfaces basically related to like how E node, how G node B's and E node B's are interacting with each other and also with the core network. These inter, these two interfaces are not related to UE and G node B, but these are related with respect to different G node B's and E node B's and AMF and UPF. So this XN interface is between like G node B and also between NG node B and G node B. So XN interface we use between the interaction of all the E node B's and G node B's. Then with respect to AMF and UPF we have NG interface like all, all towers are interacting with this AMF and UPF with the help of NG interface. So these two interfaces are important and you should know the functions of these interfaces so here we have like next generation ran and we here we have fifth generation core core network where amf and upf is the main component so this uh, 5g xn interface also divided into two parts like one is control plane and one is user plane so so we have like uh, xnc interface and xnu interface inside this we have the protocol stack and the protocol which we use uh, for control plane part is xn ap so xn application protocol which we, which talks uh, between these two g node b's like how to do the signaling between two g node b's so that is done by this xn AP protocol which is an application protocol and then it will interact to the lower layers where we have SCTP, IP data link layer and physical layer. On the user plane side like if suppose two G node bees want, wants to exchange some user data then we have like here user plane PDUs 
and then we have gtpu so here mainly gtpu comes into picture when the data you want to transfer okay then we have udp ip data link layer physical layer so this xn interface we have xn c and xn u here main protocol for control plane is xn ap and here we have gtpu and here we have the user plane pdus so suppose some pdus are coming then this gtpu will uh, help to process those pdus and here we have some specification because xn interface is not that small so so many specifications are there with respect to like general aspects and principle layer one signaling protocol xn ap we have separate uh, spec then data transfer then xn interface user plane for user plane we have different for application protocol we have different for signaling we have different so so many uh, specifications are there with respect to only xn interface this is mainly to g node b to g node b interaction or g node b to ng node b interaction okay so this is xn interface so this xn interface control plane functions like interface management and error, error handling like connected mode mobility management handover procedures so and sequence number state transfer ue context retrieval so these are functions of uh, control plane xn interface support of ran paging dual connectivity functions like if you want to add secondary node then with the help of this you can do reconfiguration modification release etc these are some functions of xn interface control plane and with the user plane we have data forwarding and flow control so these are the two functions for this user plane for xn interface then same way we have like ng interface with respect to like g node b's and ng node b's interacting with amf and upf so we have ng interface so here for control plane we use ng ap protocol next generation application protocol and for user plane mainly gtp protocol is the main protocol for user plane data so here we have ngc and ngu ngc we have main protocol ngap next generation application protocol here we have gtpu so ngap forward this to sctp ip data link physical layer same way pdus are forwarded to gtp then udp then ip this way these two interfaces are segregated and same way like we have the interface uh, like we have this xn interface so many specifications same way we have for ng interface only we have so many specification like 38.410 411 412 413 414 with the same like application protocol also signaling transport data transport both the interfaces are similar kind of functionality they have like different same way they have segregated the specs as well okay so this is the main protocol ngap here and here we have xnap so these two protocol are very important for with respect to these interfaces okay then we have like for ng interface we have some control plane functions like uh, ngc is defined between uh, next generation node and the amf okay the transport network layer is built on IP transport for the reliable transport of signaling messages. SCTP is added on top of IP. So this interface mainly deals with the core network. So this, this interface is, doesn't belong to UE protocol testing because UE doesn't bother about what is coming from the core network. It, it's only talking to the G node base or NG node base. Okay. So these interfaces are totally dependent on core network. So and this course is related to protocol testing at the UE side. So I am just explaining you so that you have the holistic approach of the all the core network components and what all interfaces we have end to end. So that's why I have added these slides. So this application layer signaling protocol is referred to as NGAP. Here we use NGAP protocol. SCTP layer provides guaranteed delivery of application layer messages in the transport IP layer point to point transmission is used to deliver the signaling PDUs. So this SCTP is stream control transmission protocol which we use in the control plane side. Then we have this NG interface uh, some functions okay for control plane like uh, next generation interface management, UE context management, UE mobility management, transport of NAS messages, paging, session management, configuration transfer. All these are the functions of NG interface control plane. Okay. 
then we have some user plane functions also with this ng interface like the transport network layer is built on ip transport and gtp is used on top of udp ip to carry the user plane pdus between the ng ran and the upf so this user plane uh, we we have to uh, flow the data to the UPF. So this GTPU will help uh, to do all these things. Then this NGU provides non-guaranteed delivery of user plane PDUs between the next generation node and the UPF. So there is no guarantee like the packet reaches to the uh, the the destination or not. So th this NGU provides non-delivery guarantee. Normally this user plane data uh, has this like we are not like every time we need the acknowledgement like the data is received or not. So in the user plane side, we normally use non-guaranteed delivery only. So this is these are some functions of user plane with ng interface. So in this video, we have discussed about like uh, XN interface and ng interface, control plane and user plane, and what all important protocol we used with these interfaces. I hope you like this video. So we'll meet you on the next video. Hello friends. So today we'll be discussing 5G protocol stack like how different layers are placed in the protocol stack and how they are what all uh, functions they are supporting so let's start this video okay so before uh, uh, going to the protocol stack first we uh, discuss about osi model so so it has like some layers physical layer data link network layer transport layer and up to application layer so this is the sender and this is the receiver where again we have these same protocol stack like physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. So suppose someone is sending one data from this application layer to uh, receiving application layer. Okay, so this is our data and if data comes into application layer then this uh, data is there and application layer will add its own header AH application header and then forward it to the presentation layer then same way presentation layer like this upper layer data uh, and header becomes the data of this presentation layer and presentation layer added its own header as well okay so every layer uh, what uh, every layer is doing they are added uh, like the header coming from the upper layer okay so this data and uh, presentation layer header is there it becomes the data of session layer and then session layer added is header okay then this again comes down to below layer transport layer so this is the data uh, same data which is at uh, session layer comes here okay with header of session layer and then this transport layer header is added so same way data comes to the physical layer and physical layer send it with the help of bits okay so whenever uh, physical layer is sending the data it it divided uh, the data into bits and then it sends to the receiving end so physical it the data uh, the data reaches to physical layer and physical layer opens his uh, physical header because every layer can open the the same uh, layer header okay so physical layer can open the header of physical layer uh, it cannot open the header of presentation layer just for example okay so whatever physical layer header is there it it will open by this physical layer and it will forward it to data link layer then data link layer will open its data uh, link header and forward it to network layer so same way every layer opens up its header and forward it to the upper layer so data reaches to application layer and application layer opens it uh, this header and it receives the data at receiving end so this is the concept of osi model which we use in our either like lt protocol stack 3g protocol stack uh, 5g protocol stack so everywhere we are using uh, this mechanism only in our protocol stack okay and there is one more uh, i'll uh, like this by this head uh, adding the header so there is one more example suppose this is our three layers just i am giving one example like sdap ptcp and rlc okay so here we have sdap pdu okay it comes to suppose below layer so it becomes the sdu of ptcp okay so sdu is there then ptcp added its header and it becomes the ptcp pdu okay so whenever data comes from the upper layer it becomes the sdu of the 
data which is receiving the uh, data from the upper layer okay so you see here here as as that pdu is there pdu is uh, total okay whatever layer is sending to the below layer it becomes the sdu of that layer and it added the header okay then it becomes the pdcp pdu okay so this is just to, uh, so that you can understand like pdu sdu concept protocol data unit and service data unit concept uh, this way it works okay so now we have like protocol stack okay so we have two types of plane one is control plane and one is user plane control plane is basically used for the signaling purpose whatever uh, messages are there rrc and mainly nas messages are there those comes under this control plane uh, signaling and we have user plane also so first we'll discuss control plane okay so this is the protocol stack like physical mac rlc ptcp rrc nas and in g node we also physical mac rlc ptcp rrc layer okay in g node we there is no nas layer nas layer presents in amf amf is similar to mme in ld so here nas is present okay so for control plane mainly two layers are there so that's why i have only uh, explain uh, this uh, points are related to only those two layers which is nas and rrc rrc ends at uh, g node b from ue to e no, uh, g node b the context is there for rrc and for uh, uh, nas nas ends at smf A amf which is which is in the core network of 5g okay so ue to amf we have the nas layer non access stratum layer okay so these are the full forms like non access stratum radio resource control for rrc packet data convergence protocol for pdcp these are uh, different layers lower layers uh, radio link control rlc mac is medium access control okay so then this nas layer is used for authentication security and idle mode procedures functions we use nas layer in rrc we have different uh, like system information radio bearers are there measurement configuration so for that purpose we use rrc layer okay so these two layers are important because most of the signaling are handled by these two layers so we'll cover these two layers in detail as well in this course okay so uh, your focus should be to uh, to understand this uh, signaling part okay then uh, data part you after that you focus on data part so your first focus should be on control plane which is these two layers nas and rrc then we have this user plane protocol stack and also one more thing this control plane is similar to lte only okay so same way lte also same protocol stack is there only the here uh, in lte we have e node b and in uh, 5g we have g node b and here we have amf in lte we have mme so this is the only difference the rest control plane protocol stack is similar to lte only then we have this user plane protocol stack so physical mac rlc pdcp as dap okay so these layers like comes under like user plane protocol stack you can say so here like uh, one new layer introduced which is as dap okay so it presents in ue as well as g node b this is for user plane stack uh, this layer comes into picture okay this layer was not in lt it only introduced in 5g okay so this layer is mainly used for qos quality of service purposes so that is the main role uh, for sdap it maintains the quality of service across the our data sessions whatever we are using okay so then ptcp we have header compression ciphering and integrity protection duplicate removal uh, these are some functions of ptcp then we have rlc layer radio link control uh, for arq and segmentation purposes we use then we have mac for retransmission multiplexing demultiplexing and scheduling and physical layer is for efficient wireless communication so as the full form is service data adaptation protocol which are which is newly introduced in 5g uh, and which the main function is to handle the qos and to maintain the qos services okay so this is about 5g user plane stack protocol stack which we have in 5g and this is uh, one bigger picture like uh, just i want to give you the glimpse so that uh, you just uh, understand on the bigger picture of protocol stack so here we have the control plane we have the user plane then 
these layers are divided into like layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 so physical layer we call it layer 1 layer in layer 2 we have mac rlc pdcp and sdap also here uh, which which they introduced in this uh, user plane for user plane protocol stack okay then we have rrc layer and nas layer that is for control plane okay so here we have nas protocol then rrc okay then we have pdcp layer okay whatever control packets are coming this is the flow to come down from nas to rrc from pdcp then rlc so this is how the control plane packets comes and user plane if some data is there it directly comes to sdap so nas and rrc won't interfere anything okay so this is the difference so in rrc like we have system information paging and in rrc we have three srbs srb 0 1 and 2 there is one more srb which is in, introduced in uh, 5g srb 3 we will discuss later for this diagram i am just uh, sharing like how the flow is coming from the uh, top layer to the bottom layer so these three srbs are there then SRB 1 and 2 comes into PDCP as well and then it maps to RLC AM mode okay so in RLC we have three modes TM, UM and AM okay so these whatever system information are there which is for control signaling it comes to TM okay paging comes to TM SRB 0 comes to TM mode then SRB 1 and SRB 2 comes to AM mode okay then we have different channels okay so here we have three types of channels like physical channel transport channel uh, logical channel then we have this rlc channel where we have different modes in rlc above that we have radio bears drbs and srbs srbs for signaling drbs for data and here we have qs flows which are uh, newly introduced in 5g and that is above this sdap layer so it maintains the qs like for internet we have different qs for IMS signaling, we have different QS flows. Then for IMS VoIP, we have different QS flows. So that way, user plane data comes to the from up, upper layer to the lower layer. Okay. Then we have MAC. Then we have different channels of uh, like transport channel BCH, PCH, DLSCH, uplink SCH, RACH, and then we have physical channels PBCH, PDSCH, PDCCH, PUSCH, PUCCH, PRACH. So that is how this. Uh, uh, this bigger picture which you have to always keep in uh, mind whenever you are learning so that will help you to divide different uh, whatever services we have and different layers how they interact with each other how they, they are supporting each other okay so you have to understand like a control plane and user plane protocol stack is uh, different okay the flow whatever is coming from the upper layer to lower layers are totally different okay so i hope you understand 5g protocol stack in, inside this we have control plane and user plane how the different segregation different layers are there to uh, support different functions okay so now we'll meet on next video thank you hi all welcome to this video so in this video we'll be discussing about 5g channels so 5g channels i have divided into two parts part one and part two so let's start part one of 5g channels Okay, so what is channel in 5G? So information flows between the different protocol layers are known as channels. So like we have protocol stack inside those we have several layers. So between those layers, if you want to flow the information, then you use channels. Okay, so with the help of these channels, you can segregate different types of data and allow them to be transported across different layers. Like some are control uh, signaling, some are data. So some, some you want to broadcast the information some uh, like some paging is there so we have different channel so based on different types of data we have different kind of channels in 5g these channels provide interfaces to each other within the 5g protocol stack and enable an orderly and defined segregation of data so so in 5g we have like three types of channel logical channel transport channel and physical channel same like in lt there is no difference in the naming of the channel like these three channels are also present in LD as well. So between RLC and MAC we have logical channel, MAC and physical we have transport channel, physical and baseband uh, we have physical channel. So these three types of channels we have in 5G. So 
each channel has some representation like to understand so logical channel means like what type of information you want to share and transport channel means how this information is transported and physical channel where to send this information so these three channels have different roles uh, so logical channel means what type of information okay so transport is how you are uh, transporting that information and physical channel exactly where to send this information so these channels are further divided into downlink and uplink okay so uplink means if you is sending uh, some data to uh, g node b then you will use uplink channels and if g node b wants to send it to ue then that will use downlink channel so these are the difference so this is the channel breakup like logical channel we have five channels in transport channel we also have five and in physical channel we have six channels so this is the breakup of channels in 5g so this is the downlink channel mapping of 5g so we have like logical channels like ccch common control channel dedicated control channel dedicated traffic channel paging control channel broadcast control channel so these all are uh, your logical channels then we have transport channel like downlink shared channel so many channels are mapped to this uh, downlink shared channel so this is the biggest channels like it contains a lot of data because it is shared among so many channels so this is uh, paging channel and this is broadcast channels so this is the mapping of broadcast control channel broadcast channel and physical broadcast channel so this is like how your information is flows then this paging control channel maps to pch and this physical downlink share channel so and this downlink share channel is also mapped to physical downlink share channel so these uh, three are physical channel like pdcch pdsch and pbch so these three are downlink physical channels so and there is one more channel pdcch which doesn't map to other transport channel so but it contains some information like dci value downlink control information and sfi slot format information you get with the help of this pdcca channel so this uh, channel present only at the physical layer okay so this is how like 5g downlink channel mapping looks like okay then we have 5g uplink channel mapping so here we have like uplink logical channel uplink transport channel and uplink physical channel so in uplink we have three logical channel common control channel dedicated control channel dedicated traffic channel and these all are mapped to uplink share channel so this is the biggest channel in uplink and this also maps to physical uplink share channel then we in transport channel we have one more channel ratch which is used for the uh, random access procedure so this is random access channel and it maps to PRAJ physical random access channel and this uplink shared channel maps to physical uplink shared channel and there is same like we have PDCCH uh, in uh, downlink we have PUCCH physical uplink control channel which contains UCI information uplink control information so that uh, this is the uh, physical channel we have in 5G so this is the physical uh, channel mapping you should know this channel mapping because sometimes in interview people ask like how many channels are there how they mapped how different uh, like uh, control channel map to uh, how different logical channels so these are the different logical channel how it maps to transport and further it maps to physical channel so you should know this mapping and all the full forms and what it contains in the further video we will be discussing about each channel like what it contains what is the role of this channel so that we will discuss in part second so this is all about like uh, uh, channel mapping how many channels we have what is the channel breakup so in this video we have discussed about all those things so i hope you like this video so we, i'll meet you on the part two of this video thank you hello friends so in this video we will be discussing about 5g channels part 2 so in the last video of 5g channels we have discussed the channel mapping like how the three different channels are mapped so now we will discuss each channel separately so this uh, 5g and our logical channel so in logical channel we have five channels so one is BCCH broadcast control channel, PCCH paging control channel, CCCH common control channel, 
DCCH dedicated control channel and DTCH dedicated traffic channel. So these are the five channels which belongs to logical category. So these are further divided into two parts like one is control channel where the signaling uh, you can send and other is the traffic channel where you can forward your data. So if you want to send data then you will use traffic channel. If you want to do any signaling then you will use control channel. So these are the five channels in logical section. So now first channel is BCCH. BCCH is broadcast control channel. So the BCCH is used within the downlink and it is used for sending broadcast information to the user equipment within that cell. Suppose uh, the network wants to broadcast some information to you then it uses this channel to broadcast that information like MIP master information blog, SIP system information blog these all uh, system information will be uh, transferred with the help of this broadcast control channel. Then we have paging control channel. So this is also a, a downlink channel. It is used to page the US whose location at a cell level is not known to the network. As a result, the paging message needs to be transmitted in multiple cell. The PCCH is mapped to the PCH transport channel and then to the PDSCH physical channel. Suppose some paging is there for any particular UE. So the core network will broadcast to all the cells, multiple cells. So with the help of this paging channel, you will get your paging messages. Then common control channel. This 5G channel is used on both downlink and uplink for transmitting control information. So with the help of this, you can send control information to and from the user equipment or mobile. The channel is used for initial access those mobiles that do not have a radio resource connection or RRC connection. So we use this channel. Then we have dedicated control channel. So this is DCCH. So this is dedicated to the particular UE. Suppose some uh, dedicated connection is established for particular UE, then you can use the channel to uh, send the control information. So because this is dedicated control channel. So DCCH is used within the uplink and downlink to carry dedicated con control information between the UE or the mobile and the network. So it is used by the UE and the network after a radio resource control or RRC connection has been established because RRC connection has been established. So now the UE will get this dedicated channel, dedicated control channel. Then we have dedicated traffic channel, so DTCH. So this channel is used for both uplink and downlink. And with the help of this channel, you can carry your user information from UE and the network. With, between that, you can use the channel. This is mainly used for sending the data because this is a traffic channel. And this channel present in both uplink and downlink. So these are the logical channels we have. Then we have transport channel. So transport channel are also five like BCH broadcast channel, downlink shared channel, DLSCH, PCH paging channel, ULSCH uplink shared channel, RATCH random access channel. So this channel you should remember the channel and the name of the channel and the mapping also and the functions. So if you know this much then you can easily answer uh, then you can easily explain to the interviewer like uh, because so many times people will ask these different channels like how they are mapped, how, what kind of information you will send, uh, send with the help of particular channels. So this kind of question you will get in your interview as well. Because currently in 5G not that much uh, detailed uh, explanation they are expecting from any candidate. But if you have uh, good, in, uh, good knowledge, technical knowledge, then you can easily crack the interview. So these are some... These are the five transport channels we have in 5G. Then uh, this is broadcast channel BCH. The BCH 5G channel is used in the downlink only for transmitting the BCCH. So I'll show you this mapping. So this is the downlink mapping like BCCH, BCL. So this is the downlink transport channel. Okay. So th this way this BCCH maps to BCH then PBCH. So this is the path of uh, broadcast if you if uh, if you want if the network wants to broadcast some data then uh, this channel should be used so this is a downlink channel only 
for transmitting BCCA system information and specifically the MIB master info block information you will get in this BCH. Then we have paging channel PCH. So PCH is used for carrying paging information from the PCCH logical channel because logical channel maps to transport channel. So this PCH is used. The PCH support discontinuous reception DRX to enable the UE to save the battery power by waking up at a specific time to receive the PCH. So for power saving and all we use like discontinuous reception or DRX. So this is also one of the feature of this channel. Then downlink share channel DLSCH as the name indicate this is downlink only channel. It is main transport channel used for transmitting data like if you want uh, for downlink data and it supports all the key 5G NR features. So this is the a very big channel like it's a share channel because so many UEs can use this downlink share channel so uh, mainly for uh, like it's, it's it's a kind of big pipe where all the UEs data are um, sharing so these include dynamic rate adaptation HARC channel awareness scheduling and special multiplexing so these this is the downlink share channel then we have uplink share channel uplink share channel means for uh, you can send the data in uplink from ue to the network downlink means from network to ue so uplink share channel this is the uplink counterpart to the downlink share channel that is the uplink transport channel used for transmission of uplink data then we have random access channel ratch the ratch is a transport channel which carries the random access preamble so mainly this channel use uh, when we do ratch procedure random access procedure so so this channel carries the random access pre preamble which is used to overcome the message collisions that can occur when U is access the system simultaneously. So this to overcome this message collision and all. So we use some, some preamble so that this channel carries. So mainly this channel uh, mainly help you to understand like how the rash procedure is happening what all messages are going. So this is the transport channel. So now the physical channel, so in 5G we have 6 physical channel like PBCH, physical broadcast channel, PDSCH, physical downlink shared channel, PDCCH, physical downlink control channel, PRATCH, physical random access channel, PUSCH, physical uplink share channel, PUCCH, physical uplink control channel. So these are the 6 channel we have in the physical channel category. This PDSC at physical downlink share channel is the main physical channel used for unicast data transmission but also for transmission of for example paging information, random access, response you want to send and delivery of parts of the system information. Then we have physical broadcast channel carries part of the system information required by the device to access the network. So th these channel works very closely to the physical layer. So exactly how your data is received at the physical layer with the help of these channel only the data is received by the physical layer in the UE. Then we have PDCCH physical downlink control channel. So this is used for downlink control information mainly scheduling decision required for reception of PDSCH physical downlink share channel and for scheduling grants enables transmission on the PUSCH. Then we have PUSC. This is for physical uplink share channel. If you want to uh, send some data in uplink, so is the physical uplink counterpart to the PDSCH. So it's similar to PDSCH. PDSCH is for downlink. PUSCH is for uplink. So this is at most one PUSCH per uplink component carrier per device. Then we have PUCCH, physical uplink control channel, is used by the device to send hybrid ARQ acknowledgement indicating to the G node B whether the downlink transport block was successfully received or not or to send channel state reports downlink channel dependent scheduling and for requesting resources to transmit uplink data. So this is physical uplink control channel then we have physical random access channel it is used for random access purpose Where, wherever you see random access channel that means that is mainly used for random access procedure. So these are the channels we have in 5G. So five channel in logical, five channel in transport and six channel in physical. So these are the different channels we have in 5G.
so thanks for watching this video i'll meet you in the next video hello friends so in this video uh, we will be discussing about 5g nas messages so this is very important like most of the interview they will ask you like nas and rrc messages because these are mostly used for signaling purposes so in this video we'll be discussing about uh, nas messages so this is the spec 24.501 for nas so we have as we already discussed in the last videos like we have mobility management and we have session management so the so this nas layer is divided into two parts so in this 5g we have like different messages with like in LT we have different messages here some naming they have changed so these are the mobility management messages which you will see in your uh, whenever you do log analysis you will see these messages in your logs okay so like authentication request response result and failure reject so these are the authentication related messages then in LTE we have attach request okay so this is important point you should remember this in LTE we have attach request in 5G we have registration request okay so in 5G registration request will go uh, but in LTE attach request will go so in here we have registration request then registration accept registration complete or if registration is rejected we have registration reject message so these are the messages we have in NAS layer with mobility management then we have uplink NAS transport downlink NAS transport deregistration request deregistration accept then service request service accept service reject configuration update command configuration update complete identity request identity response notification notification response security mode command security mode complete same as uh, LT as well then we have 5g mm status control plane uh, service request cpsr which we call it network slice specific authentication command specific authentication complete specific authentication result so these are the messages with respect to mobility management so whenever you see these messages that means the nas mobility management uh, module is triggering in the modem side so you should able to differentiate between mobility management messages and session management messages so these are the session management messages as in 5g we have pdus okay so we have pdu session establishment request accept reject then pdu session authentication command complete result then modification if you want to modify any pdu then we have modification complete and modification command reject also then PDU session release request if you want to release any PDU so this message will come then re release command release complete 5G SM status so this is 5G session management status so these are the total messages which you have in the NAS layer if you if you have good command on these messages then you can easily analyze what is happening in the NAS layer so session management and mobility management you have to make it out separate and you should know like which message belongs to which category okay that is very important to differentiate so for example i'll explain you like one message from uh, specification this is uh, nas specification 24.501 so i have taken the snapshot okay so this is the registration request message of nas layer so in interview like a 5g interview you will give they'll ask you like what will go in the registration request what all IEs are there, whether these are mandatory IEs or optional IEs. So these kind of questions, they will come in the interview. So this registration request message has these many IEs. So it's a, so many IEs are there. Information element means IEs. Then corresponding to this, uh, there is a field like type or reference. So whatever this IE will say, you will get the uh, description and uh, detail explanation in, within the spec like if you go to section 9.2 you will get the detail of extended protocol discriminator okay then there is one more field presence so presence as m or o like mandatory i so mandatory i should go in the message you cannot skip these i so this is mandatory as per the 3gpp specification every registration request has these one two three four five six seven seven mandatory i's that should be present then we have format so we have v we have l 
we have deal uh, type length and value so we have these different format like some values there some length is there some type is there so this is our format is there and this is the length so this is the uh, this is how uh, you can see the messages so in the 3gpp uh, spec if you go you will see these many i's are there inside this registration request okay so like extended protocol discriminator security header type spare half octet registration request message identity which identity for registration you are using 5g registration type ngksi 5g mobility identity so these are the mandated then we have optionalized like 5g mm capability uh, ue security capability pdu session status ue status additional goodie so these uh, this is the way like you have to refer the messages if you want to go to detail so these specification you have to refer time to time and you can see what all i's are there inside these messages then we have registration accept message so inside this you have these different i's these different from registration request okay then same we have this uh, registration accept message identity 5g registration uh, result goti you will get 5g goti so here we have like presence format length so this is the format for 3gpp messages same like lt in lt also this way you have uh, information element and same uh, all the format and all is same only so but some naming they have changed in the 5g some messages name they have changed in the 5g that is the only difference so pdu session status pdu session reactivation result so that way you can see like suppose in the logs you see like registration accept is there then you can verify like these five uh, mandatory i should be present in the log when you will see the logs in qxdm or elt tool for mediatek or any other tool for any the chipset so these messages you have to refer time to time because these are the singling messages which you can see Uh, uh, we call it OTA logs as well. So over the air logs, you can see these messages, and you can analyze the logs like where which components failing, what what is the issue with respect to RRC or NAS layer. So th these are the NAS layer messages. Same way we have RRC messages also. If you have good understanding of these messages, NAS and RRC, then you can easily uh, uh, debug so many things with the help of these messages. Okay. then we have registration complete message so extended protocol discriminator security header type registration complete message identity so a transparent container so same way the, this message also has some mandatory i some optional i so this is way like you can see the different messages and with their i then we have registration reject suppose somebody you is sending request then the network is sending registration request then registration request message identity which cause like 5g mm cause it is rejecting uh, the ue okay then some timer values are there so this is how like reject message there so this 5g mm cause is important uh, by which reason the network is rejecting the registration request so these are some of the causes of 5g mm like illegal ue if ue illegal then network will reject with this i with this cause okay so you will see the uh, these uh, bits corresponding to that these uh, illegal i or illegal me pnl not allowed tracking area not allowed sync failure congestion mac failure restricted service area so these all uh this in interview also people will ask like what all different 5g mm causes you have in 5g so that network will reject any ue so you have to tell these uh, any 5 or 10 you should uh, learn uh, you should remember these uh, cause codes and these uh, causes so that you can explain like if some re request is coming based on some uh, illegal uh, ue is there so it, it is re rejecting the network is rejecting plmn not allowed some suppose some ue has some plmn which is not allowed by the network so this plmn not allowed would come from the network side so this is how like uh, you have so many messages in uh, nas layer so mobility management and session management both are separate different messages we have then some example of how you can see the messages how you can see the ies the presence uh, mandatory optional format length all these things you can see in the messages and we have these causes so network will reject the 
any request with with these causes okay so in this video we have discussed the messages and all like in nas layer what all messages we have and some example of uh, like different messages with respect to ies and all okay so i hope you like this video hello friends so in this video we will be discussing about 5g srbs so these srbs are function of rrc layer only so srb full form is signaling radio bearers so same like in lte we also have these srbs in 5g as well so this is the 3gpp specification of rrc layer 38.331 so let's start this okay so this 5g srb is like they are defined as radio bearers that are used only for the transmission of rrc and nas messages so with the help of these srbs you can send these rrc and nas messages between ue and the g node b so so these are some of the types of srbs like we have four types of srbs in 5g like srb0 srb1 srb2 and srb3 so this srb3 is newly introduced in 5g in lte we have only three srbs srb0 srb1 and srb2 so this srb0 is used for rrc messages using the common control logical channel so so whosoever rrc messages using cch logical channel that will use srb0 and this srb1 is for rrc messages which may include a piggyback nas messages so the, there is a piggyback concept same like lt like rr uh, nas messages are piggyback inside some of the rrc messages so we call it piggyback messages okay so this srb1 Uh, has some messages which has piggyback nas messages as well okay so prior to the establishment of srb2 all using dcch logical channel so this srb1 is using dcch channel means this is dedicated control channel srb1 uses but srb0 is not using dedicated channel it is using common control channel so this is the uh, difference between srb0 and srb1 so this srb2 is is for nas messages all using dcch logical channel okay this srb2 has a, lo, a lower priority than srb1 and may be configured by the network after access stratum security activation once the security has been established then we can use srb2 for sending the nas messages as well then this srb3 is for specific rrc messages when ue is in endc or nrdc all using dcch logical channel so uh, this we use when we have secondary g node b as well this srb3 so we can see in this diagram like suppose we have master g node b or we have secondary g node b so these three srb0 srb1 and srb2 is only connected to the master and this uh, like srb3 we can use for secondary g node b access stratum signaling as well so this is how like four srbs are there in 5g and these all are like functions of rrc layer as well because rrc layer only control these srbs so we have srb0 1 2 and 3 so srb0 0 like system information you can send this is the purpose for rrc connection setup in this we we are not using any ptc layer rlc mode is um mode like in rlc we will discuss uh, later like uh, what is rlc layer and we have different modes in rlc like tm um and am so this srb1 uh, srb0 is using rlc um mode and logical channel is common control channel only this is this srb is only using common control channel srb0 because uh, so many uh, us are using this Uh, uh, accessing this information, but later SRBs like SRB1, SRB2, and SRB3, they all are using dedicated control channel. So specific to the UE, dedicated channel is used for specific to particular UE. Then this SRB1, we uh, during RRC connection setup, access stratum signaling from master G node B. Then SRB2, after RRC connection setup, we use this for transfer of NAS signaling message. then we have srb3 optionally by secondary g node b access stratum uh, signaling from secondary g node b that's why we use srb3 okay so this uh, srb0 only we use this 
RLC mode UM, rest SRBs we use RLC acknowledge mode. Okay, and also only in SRB zoo, uh, SRB zero there is no PDCP layer used, and rest rest SRBs we have like PDCP layer also comes into picture. So this is the SRBs of RRC layer in 5G. Then suppose uh, same like we have signaling ready where 0, 1, 2 and 3. So this using common control channel, rest all are using DCCS channel, dedicated control channel. And this uh, SRB3 we use for when you is in ENDC or NRDC states like the architecture. Then we have different messages comes in this SRB0 like we have RRC connection reestablishment request, RRC resume request, RRC setup, RRC setup request. Okay. Then we have SRB2 for downlink information transfer, uplink information transfer, this kind of messages. SRB1 we have counter check, downlink information transfer, measurement indication, RRC establishment, establishment complete, reconfiguration, security mode command complete. UV capability inquiry, all these comes in SRB1. Then we have SRB3 for failure information, measurement report, RRC reconfiguration, reconfiguration complete. So we use uh, these SRB3. So these mapping of the messages is very important to understand because uh, sometimes interview asks like which message go in which S uh, SRB. So you should know like uh, which SRB we are using for sending these messages. So these are the mapping of some messages with respect to our SRBs. So these all are RRC layer messages. In next video also we will discuss detail about all the RRC messages like uh, so many messages for UE capability or RRC setup request or all these messages we will be discussing in next video. So in this video, we, we have only covered the SRBs, like different SRBs we have, SRB 0, 1, 2 and 3. So thanks for watching this video. Hello friends. So in this video, we will be discussing about 5G RRC layer messages. So 5G RRC messages are very important. So we will be discussing in this video. So these are the RRC messages total we have in 5G RRC layer. So we have counter check, counter check response, downlink information transfer, failure information, location measurement, indication measurement, report, MIB, mobility from NR command, paging, RRC re-establishment, RRC re-establishment complete, RRC reject, RRC release, RRC resume, RRC setup, RRC setup request, setup complete, RRC system information request, SIB1 system information, all the system information are part of RRC layer only. UE capability inquiry, UE capability information. So these all are the RRC messages. If you have good understanding of these messages, if you know how to refer these messages in the specification 38.331, then you can easily debug the testing issue, whatever you are facing in the RRC layer. So first is in RRC, first we have RRC connection establishment. So same like in LT we have RRC connection establishment in 5G also same we have. So this is the specification uh, 38.331. So this is the three message connection establishment procedure RRC is having. RRC setup request, RRC setup and RRC setup complete. If these three messages are exchanged between UE and e -Node B, that means your device is RRC connection established. Uh, maybe one thing you have observed here we have message RRC setup request but in LT we have RRC connection request so this is the difference here like we have RRC setup request okay so this thing you keep in mind so here we have RRC setup then RRC setup complete suppose you, you are sending RRC setup request and you are getting reject from the network so you will get the reject course uh, so this is the uh, network reject condition like if the RRC connection establishment is rejected. If it is successful then these three messages will be there. If it is rejected then initial uh, time only when the UE is sending RRC connection request that time only network reject with RRC reject. So this is the RRC connection establishment procedure with these three messages you can say connection is established. So now we see these three messages in detail like first is RRC uh, setup request. So RRC setup request is, is used to initiate the establishment of RRC connection 
we use SRB0 signaling radio is SRB0 RLC service access point TM mode transparent mode logical channel CCCH and direction is from UE to the network so this is the RLC connection request so here we have two IEs uh, like UE identity and establishment cause so these two values are uh, goes inside this message so for establishment cause we have different type of establishment cause the the type of service you are uh, accessing that type of establishment cause you, uh, you will see in this message when you check in the log inside the RRC connection request you can see either UE identity and establishment cause and establishment cause is out of these all uh, causes which are defined here like emergency high priority access empty access MO signaling MO data MO voice call MO video call MO SMS MPS priority access MPS is multimedia priority service and MCS uh, priority access mission critical service priority access so these are the establishment cause you will get uh, when you see uh, like any one of this establishment cause you will get inside this establishment cause uh, you cannot have two establishment cause in one RRC connection request it should always one and then you will get uh, UE identity so initial UE identity identity like you ng5 stmc part 1 or random value where from that you will generate this initial UE identity and establishment cause these all are the causes which are mentioned here as well so this is the first message RRC setup request for for initiating the RRC connection procedure then you have RRC setup message so this setup message is used to establishment SRB1 so this message will go in uh, SRB0 service access point TM logical channel CCCH direction is from network to UE so this message uh, from the network side to UE side so this RRC connection uh, setup message we have like radio bearer configuration master cell group so these are the information these are the two critical information like radio bearer configuration that you want to establish SRB1 so that configuration you will get so this is not big message uh, okay so this information this uh, message is used to establish the uh, SRB1 signaling radio bearer 1 then we have third message which is RRC setup complete message so this uh, message confirm that you have successfully completed the RRC connection establishment so here you have uh, SRB1 uh, so this message will go in SRB1 previous two messages are going in SRB0 you can see here SRB0 see here SRB0 but here we have SRB1 because we have established the SRB1 with the help of this RRC setup message same thing you have to explain in the interview so based on that uh, the interviewer will uh, understand like you have understanding of this RRC layer so these are the RLC uh, like service access point AM mode so here earlier we we were having a DM mode transparent mode but now we are using AM mode AM, AM mode is acknowledgement mode okay transparent means nothing is added but here you you need acknowledgement so this channel is uh, logical channel which is dedicated control channel this is common control channel this uh, earlier messages are common for many UEs you can say but this uh, message RRC setup complete message this is a dedicated message for particular UE so th that's why they are using logical channel DCCH so this is the message uh, so many IEs are there this these this message has lot of IEs so you should remember these IEs like selected PLM and identity registered AMF Guami type SNSSAI list dedicated NAS uh, message then we have uh, identities like NG5 STMC value so register uh, AMF like uh, via PLM and identity or AMF identifier based on that you will get the register uh, AMF so this is the RRC setup complete message these three message makes RRC connection establishment then suppose uh, you are getting reject from the network then this again uses SRP0 TM mode common control channel and network to UE so here like you will get the reject uh, so you will get the reject wait time so this information you will get so that means your RRC connection is rejected by the network then you have uh, one more 
important message which is 5G UV capability messages. From this message you come to know what is your device capability then all the uh, capabilities are exchanged between UE and the network. So this uh, this is the request came from uh, G Node B where it will ask you UE capability inquiry and you have to tell the network your capability like what kind of device you have, what kind of technology you support like 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G or what kind of bands you support, what kind of carrier aggregation combination you support. All these details you will send in this UE capability information and here the first you should receive this request from the network UE capability inquiry then only you have to send this uh, reply by saying UE capability information then GNode you further uh, transfer this information to AMF where you have like uh, you will share whatever information uh, you receive from the UE and this you will say UE radio capability information indication so that way it reaches to the AMF so this is how UE network capability inquiry happens and uh, UE respond with the UE capability information. So I hope uh, you like this video and you are uh, learning new things in the RRC layer messages. So thanks for watching this video. We'll meet in the next video. Hello friends. So today we'll be discussing about 5G protocol conformance tool which is Keysight S8704A. Okay, so that is from key side. So with the help of this simulator, you can perform the protocol conformance testing in your lab setup. Okay, so let's start this video. So this is the this is how it looks like. This one uh, PC you get, and then this is the key side simulator. Okay, S874A. With the help of this, you can do all these things with the help of one box. Okay, so like this 38.523 hyphen one. This is for 5G conformance testing. Then 31.121, 31.124 for UCM and USAT test cases. These are SIM related test cases. Then we have 36.523 for LT related test cases. Then 34.229 uh, specification with the help of which IMS test cases you can run. Then 37.901 with the help of which throughput performance testing like how much speed you are getting in your mobile device that also you can test. Then 37.571 for LBS test cases. So with the help of this simulator, you can do all these things. Okay. So it depends like what kind of role you will get uh, uh, for exec execution of the test cases with, with respect to these technologies. Okay. So it supports all these things. Okay. So uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, everything uh, this, this box supports. Okay. So th this is how the screen looks like uh, when you uh, try to execute the test cases uh, conformance test cases so here it will come like protocol conformance tool set so here we have different like test project test plan test run test results reports settings all these things you can uh, do with the help of this you can put the test project name whatever name you want to put test plan name you want to put and these are like 38.523 hyphen one these all are the test cases which uh, which you can execute with the help of this script okay so you select whatever test cases you want to perform and then click on this icon so that it will come into inside this window okay then all the test cases whatever you want to run okay because this uh, test specification has maybe so many thousands of test cases but you want to run only 100 test cases so you just add those cases inside this and you can save it okay so once you save it your test plan is generated uh, the test test plan name you can put test project everything you can set in this tool set okay so this is how the gui of this tool looks like okay when you when you have some mobile phone and you you want to test it uh, with the help of uh, like this tool then this is how the gui looks like graphical user interface okay so inside this uh, there is one term like pix and pixit parameters that is important like it will tell you like what all features are supported by your device okay so like fa false or true like uh, if some suppose p uh, attach with pdn is supported so it must be true here so you have uh, this file is there whenever you do conformance testing there is one pix pixit parameter file that uh, you will get based on that you you can uh, configure this tool you can put that file inside this uh, tool and then 
you can see like what all features are supported and not supported so this is parameter added tool uh, here like parameter added if you want to edit some five uh, picks and pixel parameter you can change it as well like true to false false to true you can do so this is one thing which uh, uh, whenever you do conformance testing so this picks and picks it parameter you should take care so what is this picks and picks it parameter picks is protocol implementation conformance st statement okay is a list of features supported on the device under test so dut we call it dut device under test and typically determine which test cases are applicable for the device so this with the help of this picks you come to know like what all features are supported okay and what are not supported and based on that you can generate the test cases suppose you support carrier aggregation feature then carrier aggregation test case will be added okay so it depends like what features you support uh, if your device support 3G, 4G, 5G, then all these test cases will be added. If only supports 5G uh, uh, technology, then only 5G test cases are added. Okay. If 4G is supported, only 4G test cases will add. So based on that, your PIX, uh, uh, this PIX parameters get added or removed. Then we have PIXIT, then protocol implementation, extra information for testing. So these PIXIT parameters are some runtime behavior the runtime parameter which you which you can modify with the help of pixit editor pix pixit editor are parameter that can be used to modify certain runtime behavior of the test case within the constraint of the specification requirement like be like you cannot uh, modify anything okay if it is if it will come under the specification requirement then only you can uh, play with it okay but you cannot randomly change anything so this is how like pix and pixit parameter for any Protocol conformance testing, you should uh, you you should have understanding of picks and picks it. Then how to run these test case? Suppose you have selected all the test cases, whatever, uh, like I I showed you right test project test plan. So test test run is what whatever test case you want to execute. So you just tick tick uh, if you tick all these test cases and if you uh, click on this play button then this test case is st start executing okay then you can check whether the test case pass and fail in the next slide will show you so uh, you can select the test case whatever you want to run and unselect it if you don't want to run so this is how you can run the test case in this simulator then how to check the test result so once you execute with the help of this test run, then test result tab is there so here it will show like pass fail pass fail uh, uh, like green is pass and this uh, here if you see the test run summary three pass one in inconclusive and fail inconclusive means it is not pass or it is not fail like the result is not uh, simulator is not able to give the verdict some some issue is there so it it gives inconclusive so this is how test summary you will get in this tool and here four test case if you executed three pass one inconclusive you can get the results okay so this is one log viewer tool which this uh, key site has a uh, log viewer okay with the help of this you can open the network log okay so whatever simulator is is what it is just a g node b which is which is radiating the uh, frequency and all the support same like your a tower which is giving you the service at your home okay so so you can open these logs in this log viewer network side log but you cannot open a, a ue side log for ue side log you have to uh, install that uh, qxdm for Qual qualcomm or elt tool for mediatek that you should have to collect the ue side log but for this simulator we, as we call in network, network side log, you can uh, open in the, with the help of this log viewer and you, you can see like whatever steps, suppose 30 steps are there in one test case, whatever you are executing, what all steps are passed, uh, all test steps should pass to make the verdict pass. Okay, so if any step is failing, then you will get the verdict as fail. And here we have filters like to put like you want to see RRC, NAS or any layer specific messages you want to see, you can filter and you can, uh, it will show here like whatever message is there. If you can click any message, then you can see the eyes and all everything you can see in this log. So this is how like this S8704A protocol conformance tool set looks like. This is from Keysight and these are very costly simulators. 
which like big companies like Qualcomm, Samsung, Apple, or so many companies they have these simulators in their lab mainly like for R and D or for like if if they have like devices like Samsung has devices and it's a very big market so they can internally test these test cases and they can pass it and then uh, then subsequently the test labs will also pass the test case so if some cases are failing outside so it will internally check Samsung will check internally after executing and fix it if some issue is then then their development team will fix it and give the fixes so this is the like this is the tool which will help to test the 5G uh, confirmance testing as well. So thanks for watching this video. I'll meet you on the next video. Hello friends. So today we'll be discussing about GCF device certification process. So this certification is for mobile devices or NBIT devices or 5G. Uh, the devices which support 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. So these certification. Uh, is mandatory for Europe region so if you want to launch any phone in Europe region then you should have GCF certification okay so let's discuss this in detail so GCF uh, certification is for Europe region and its full form is global certification forum so this is uh, like supported by operators manufacturers or test industry worldwide so this is a global you can uh, say like global recognition is there for this certification okay so this will help the mobile industry to define a certification process for mobile devices implementing 3gpp radio access so this gcf certification is totally uh, uh, like derived the test cases from the 3GPP and 3GPP is the backbone for the GCF certification. So it, it is this GCF is 3GPP market representation partner as well and they, they assure the device interoperability and device quality. Like if you do this certification then your device has a good quality with respect to different features whatever device supports. So this uh, the tagline for GCF is test once use anywhere. So if you test it once then you can launch it in uh, most of the countries like uh, uh, they are allowing uh, GCF certificates if you have then you can launch it. So this is a this certification complements regulatory schemes like different EMC user safety etc. So uh, these sch schemes complements uh, uh, GCF and this certification uh, criteria based on co core standards from SOs and so different 3GPP technologies like LT Advanced, Advanced Pro, NBRT, LTM and uh, different client application and services also it support like RCS, NFC, RSP so all these uh, remote sim provisioning so all these kind of testing like with respect to your mobile phone or any uh, ch chipset you have you can test it the different different features they have the test cases and based on that you can get the certificate as well so test cases agree agreed by the industry for the industry so the operators the device manufacturers so all uh, uh, test uh, these uh, test cases on their device and then they can launch the product Okay, so it's, it, it provides the harmonization of testing and the avoids duplication of testing because sometimes if we don't have any test plan, like we don't have feature wise understanding of the test cases. So sometimes what we do, we do duplicate testing as well. But in GCF, they have like, if some feature is supporting, they know like what test case should be performed. So they have a criteria which uh, if you have these many set of test cases or set of features uh, based on that, the test plan will be generated. So this reducing testing overheads for manufacturers and operators. So they don't have to separately test. Uh, so they, they can rely on GCF certificates. If, if you are getting this certificate, then you are doing thorough testing of your mobile devices so this gcf is like uh, you can say global cooperation to deliver certification criteria and certified devices so the gcf uh, they like it follows so many standard like 3gpp gsma ccsa so many uh, uh, 
global standards are there with GCA follow. So extensive partner participation from operators, manufacturers and test industry. Okay, based on that, they have like certification criteria and then GCF certified products. So you will get that if you do this GCF certification. So in this GCF working structure, so they have uh, one SG like steering groups and they have board of directors, then GCF office workshops and industry events are there. Inside this steering group, they, they have divided this uh, different kind of testing like conformance, 3GBP, GSMA, OMA and CCSA comes here in CAG. And there is one FTAG group that has field trials for, uh, by using GSMA standard IOP interoperability testing 3GBP OMA and ICSA Internet of Things they have a separate group PAG performance 3GBP GSMA CTIA and CAG2 TC uh, AG2 and CDMA technology so this is 3GBP2 technology not 3GBP so it has different groups uh, that takes care of different kind of testing uh, and uh, they follow different uh, standards so this is the process like this is the mandatory part which you have to do like require test identify you have to identify the test cases then these three things will parallelly happen like conformance testing interoperability testing and field trials this is live network testing where your operator suppose you want to launch any product in some region particular region so those operators you have to go to their network in the fields and different roads and all uh, field testing you have to do then you have to pass certain test cases based on that you get the field trial certificate so these three you have to do parallelly so conformance testing is basically this protocol uh, testing also rf and sim test cases as well then after these three uh, if you complete then compliance folder will be generated where all the reports and results are kept then these test results are reviewed and then certification declared and certified device listed on the GCF website. So these, this is the mandatory process and there is one optional testing uh, performance testing that, that is optional if you want to do you can do but this is not mandatory. So these are these are the this is the process which uh, GCF follows. So they have one GCF certification criteria we call it GCF CC. So this CC, if uh, your device support particular features, then this uh, Excel sheet will be generated. Based on that, your test case will be added. Like if you support CA or SRVCC or LTE, 5G or CSFB, like Interact technologies, all these things, the more feature uh, your phone support, the more test cases you have to perform. So that is a simple rule. The more uh, technology your device supports, more testing you have to do and more test cases will be there okay so this gcfcc includes conformance test interoperability test and live network field trials so these three already discussed in last, last slide so these three are very important in gcf these three type of testing then this gcfcc also includes the requirement related to gsm utra eutra nfc different features different applications so all these things it combines and give you the different tabs are there if you see in this uh, Excel so so many tabs are there with respect to LT 5G SIM NFC so many test cases it will generate based on your feature whatever feature you support then you have live network field trials where you have the route map like uh, here you have to go and you have to test the uh, mobile phone so these field trials are tests that are executed in live and commercial networks devices are driven through a number of networks that are known to use different infrastructure vendors so with different vendors and uh, you can do this testing then this ro road testing helps to ensure that the device will work under real network condition like so many uh, when you do field testing then so many things are there like uh, the highways are there then uh, underpasses are there so so many rainy conditions so in different condition how your mobile behaves that uh, test your uh, that uh, network field testing will give you the exposure to that so you should know the routes like where to go where you'll get the handover scenario where the frequencies are changing in the network where the call drops are more so, so many things in this field trials you, you come to know when when you do this kind of test 
then finally you if you perform all that then you will get the gcf certification so these three uh, you have to mandatory test conformance interoperability and field trials then we have optional device testing which is performance then here compliance folder will be generated and device is gcf certified and this will be listed on the gcf website you can see what whosoever device is gcf uh, certified you can go to the gcf site and you will find out there, there is a proper section there where you can see all the devices whatever is going whatever is certified so this is all about gcf so i hope you learn so many new things so so many times in, in interview they will ask you conformance testing the simulators or the gcf and ptcr certification the operator certification at&t verizon t-mobile so many kind of certification in this protocol testing and conformance testing people ask so i hope this uh, this clarifies you like what is gcf and and also in next video we'll discuss about ptcrb as well so thanks for watching this video hello friends so today we'll be discussing about 5g ue logging and analysis tools so see so many uh, tools are available with respect to different chipset with the help of that you can capture the logs and also you can analyze the logs for suppose some failure observed in the ue side so with the help of these analysis tool you can analyze these logs and you can watch all the messages like rrc nas layer messages and you can do the analysis as well so let's start this video so first the chipset is mediatek we'll discuss mediatek tools so this is the different uh, you can say the mediatek log and tools so they have one tool called mtk logger so this is a very important tool uh, so whenever you are doing mediatek chipset testing so you require this mtk logger tool so this will help you to capture the logs like mobile log modem log network log all these logs you can capture with the help of this mtk logger and uh, th these are the categories of different logs like android log kernel log bt log bluetooth log mod modem log tcp dump so all these different logs are there and these are the tools available with the help of that you can capture those logs so the, these three you can get from mtk logger okay then we have some other tools as well so uh, gat tool pc tools and hyper terminal uh, maybe you have seen hyper terminal with the help of that you can give the at commands as well and elt tool so elt tool is also from mediatek so this elt and this mtk logger these two are from mediatek so with the help of that e elt tool only you can capture this modem log and also you can analyze those those logs with the help of elt tool so this is very important so mtk logger and elt tool are the most uh, useful tool for mediatek chipset so this is the mtk logger so th this is a whatever phone you are testing so inside that you can install this mtk logger you you get the apk also and uh, once you install this uh, mtk logger you will find out this screen when once you open the application so here this uh, this gui will come and with the help of this red button you can start and stop the logs once you start the log then this timer starts and uh, you can capture the logs so here this button uh, if you click it it will open settings so in, uh, inside settings you have so many options like mobile log modem log network log gps log so so many logs you, you can just click it here it, a new pop a window will come and you can select uh, whatever logs developer is asking see you should understand like developer will ask you give me this log this log is missing and also you should know like what logs uh, my issue uh, uh, lies and then only i can give those logs to the uh, dev team development team okay inside this mobile log you have so many other options like android log kernel log bluetooth log so whatever uh, checkbox you tick that log will be captured so th this is the setting part after setting you can start this log and you can stop this log as well so once you stop this log 
in your mobile application in your mobile phone one folder will be generated and these logs are captured inside that folder which you can share it to the development team so and also you can analyze that log whatever modem log is there with the help of next tool this is elt tool so with the help of uh, whatever logs you have captured here but this logs as i this tool as i already told you this is only for analyzing modem logs so whatever uh, 4g or 5g logs you have that you can analyze with the help of this elt tool so these are paid tools from mediatek so suppose any mobile phone manufacturer is there and he is using mediatek chipset so that so only mediatek will give these tools to only those device manufacturer who buys their product okay so this is not freely available you have to uh, these are the paid tools if you work in the this uh, protocol testing and this chipset testing conformance testing companies so there you will automatically get exposure of these tools so uh, whenever you are giving interview and all so you, you should know about these tools with respect to mediatek chipset so this is how this elt tool looks like all the messages you can see here here once you click on any message the this ies will come so so many whatever ies are there inside those messages you can see those ies so this is very helpful this tool is very good so this is for only mediatek log analysis okay then second chipset is qualcomm so they also have different tools with the help of that you can capture the logs and also you can analyze the logs as well so this is the qxdm uh, tool so with the help of that you can capture the log so this is the window of qxdm tool this is for qualcomm chipset and this is very familiar i think most of the people know about this uh, capturing tool but maybe who are who belongs to some rf background or they doesn't have any exposure to the ue side testing so maybe they don't know so these it uh, this tool has so many windows like small small windows whatever uh, you want to capture you can enable in the option so many uh, so many options are available so like item view log view message view so this way you can configure as per your requirement so whatever specific issue you have based on that you can see like what kind of logs you want like uh, you want lt log ims log 5g logs sim logs u sim log so based on your test area you can filter those items so for uh, for capturing any logs whether it is mediatek or whether it is qualcomm or any other chipset first this modem port should be detected so for uh, your device mod, uh, port should be detected and for that you should have uh, the usb drivers okay because once you connect your device in your uh, laptop where you have these tools so that uh, you are not able to capture the logs unless this modem port whatever this is for qualcomm it is not coming okay once these ports are coming then only you can capture those logs in the qxdm tool so most important is usb driver so uh, you will get the driver if you work in any company for these testing so they will give you the drivers you just install it it's not it's very simple process okay then once you drive driver install then you can see those ports in this uh, device selection okay then you can check it uh, where this naming is coming like msm8916 this is the qualcomm chipset you just tick it and connect it so once you connect it drivers are installed qxdm you have opened then you have selected the device with the help of this com port and you just connect it once you connect it then the logs start flowing in these uh, filters whatever you have enabled like item view log view message view and you can see these uh, different colors coming with respect to different messages whatever is configured in the tool so you can see that then suppose you want to clear some logs suppose some logs you don't want and you have captured in this qxdm tool then you just go to 
the window and uh, there are so many options like here here available so from one of that option you just go and clear those items okay or you just uh, go to this window and right click and this uh, this option will come like clear items and those logs will be deleted because you don't require then there, there are ways to save the logs you just go to the file in the QXDM and then there is an item save item you just save it and whatever location it uh, you want you just go to that location and save the logs to that part so that way you can capture the QXDM log so this is for Qualcomm chipset and they have one more tool which is QCAT so with the help of that QCAT tool you can analyze those logs whatever you have captured in QXDM so you uh, whatever file you have saved you just open it open the Q, QCAT tool and you just open that file and you will see all those messages like uh, this uh, description suppose this is IMS messages or whatever message are invite sessions or once you click it this IEs will come so th this is same like any other analysis tool like ELT tool for MediaTek this QCAT tool is for uh, Qualcomm so you will get and you can filter as well like whatever logs you want you just filter it and ok it so this is one more tool of Qualcomm which is QCAT this is this will helpful in log analysis for uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G any uh, technology you can analyze in this QCAT then the third chipset is SPRD maybe you have heard heard about this chipset SPRD is Spectrum chipset okay so this is the low end phones whatever feature phone or very low end phones we have like suppose Lava and Micromax maybe you have seen the keypad phones or some it supports like LTE as well but they are very low end so top end phone mainly are from Qualcomm then middle middle end phone is from uh, MediaTek and the low end phone is from SPRD chipset so mainly these three chipset companies you come across whenever you do this testing so SPRD also has one tool which is logger tool so in in one tool itself you can capture as well as analyze the logs okay so this is the for capturing and analysis as well so this is the tool version here it's written once you open the tool these are also paid tools so I'm just showing you the snapshots so, and this is the version whatever the software is flashed in the device that is there this is the modern version okay so this is the internal messages you can see all those messages and air messages over the air message you can see RRC connection reconfiguration paging RRC connection request so many messages all you can see here in the window and traces are also there then whatever serving cell is there you can see those uh, the RSRP RSRQ values so this is the window so from this tool you can also capture LTE 5G whatever technology you have you can capture with the help of this tool so SPRD has logger tool so you, you should know all these tools uh, whatever uh, different chipset you have you just uh, one thing you understand if the chipset is like different suppose Qualcomm is there it has different tools MediaTek is there it has different tools SPRD is there it has different tools if Intel is there it has different tools so every chipset company has their own tools okay for analyzing the logs so in this video we have discussed about different logging and log analysis tools so thanks for watching this video hello friends so in this section we will be discussing about 5g ue or device flashing tools so flashing means like if you want to update the code or firmware on a chip or a, on a mobile device then you use flashing tools okay suppose any new software you want to flash in the device or any new software which developer has given you if some if some failure is there or to fix those failures then you need these flashing tools to flash the device so let's discuss the flashing tools so first is for Qualcomm chipset suppose in your mobile phone you have Qualcomm chipset then how you will flash that device so there is a tool QFIL 
flash tool so qfill is qualcomm flash image loader tool so qualcomm flash image loader qfill is an application to make bridge or connection between android smartphone and pc and by this connection you can easily flashing stock chrome on or qualcomm devices okay with the help of this tool you can flash the software okay so this is the qfill tool it looks like like here we have uh, the port number so for that the dri driver should be installed in your pc so that uh, the the com port will be detected okay here is an option select port once you click it on select port this port will come and you just uh, select it then there are two types fiat build and meta build so you have to select fiat build then programmer path so you have to select the path where your build is present and you have to select this dot mbn file browse from browse you can select this file then here also we have option so no need to do anything so there is again load xml so here you have to load the xml so here we have uh, like these xml so we have to load it after doing all these things then you have to press download button so once you press it then it will start flashing the software in the mobile device and after it successfully flash the device then it will come uh, this uh, blue uh, written like uh, download succeed and your device will be flashed so with the help of this qfill software you can flash any qualcomm chipset device okay so that is how you can flash it then for mediatek mediatek devices also they have one tool they call it sp flash tool okay so sp flash tool uh, with the help of this flash tool you can flash the mediatek devices so there are two option like download agent and scatter loading scatter file is there and download agent two options are there okay so you have to browse this by clicking this download agent and you will get the file mtk all in one dot bin okay you you just select that file and after that you have to uh, select the scatter file which is present in your software wherever you have copied your software you just click on this scatter file and then you can uh, you can browse this whatever see once you connect uh, suppose you have connected you uh, with the pc uh, and your mobile phone with the usb okay once you connected and the driver is installed this when this will come like mt6577 this is the chipset name so uh, this mediatek has so many chipsets so whatever chipset your device supports it will come here okay so for that uh, same chipset you have to select the scatter file and uh, so these two things you have to select it and then you just select here option download only okay so once everything is selected then you just click on this download button so after uh, it uh, after uh, the flashing then one pop up will come and it will come download successfully this way it will come and the, your device will be successfully flashed with the help of this sp flash tool so you can go to this site www.spflashtool.com you can get uh, all the details about this tool and you can this is very easy it will take only 5 five, 5 five minutes less than 5 minute to flash a device so it's it's not very difficult as you just need to know like this is a tool these files you have to select and then click on the download button so this is how you can flash the mediatek devices with the help of sp flash flashing tool okay so in this video we have discussed about qfill and sp flash tool for flashing qualcomm and mediatek devices so i hope you like this section